You've asked us for more 3D related content. And now that Godot 4 is in beta, we are working on it. So we're making this little demo inspired by Ratchet and Clank. And I thought this would be a good opportunity to try out the new rendering engine in Godot 4 using the new real time global illumination for uh, large scenes called SDFGI. This is what we'll explore in this video. Let's get started with the global illumination turned off. The main settings I have in this scene are shadows turned on on my directional light. And notice how the shadows look much better in Godot 4 than in Godot 3. This is with the default settings here, no anti-aliasing. And then I have a world environment node. This is a node you use in Godot to turn on post processing effects usually. But with Godot 4, this is also where you will turn on the global illumination as the FGI. Just a quick mention that this scene uses volumetric fog already, which allows us to wash out objects in the distance and give the image a bit more depth. Now, uh, I'm going to turn on as the FGI and look at what happens. Uh, the scene instantly brightens up because global illumination simulates the light bouncing around your scene. And so by default, it's going to make things brighter. If I turn and back off, uh, focus on the shadow area below the trees there, and you will see that it makes some areas darker and some brighter because of the effect of light bouncing around. In some places, more light is going to arrive and near the rocks because there are more um, objects occluding light, it's going to give you some more darkness. So this is the effect of SDFGI. Another place to focus on is the robot here. Look at the shadow area. With global illumination turned off, it's uh, of a uniform color, desaturated one in this case. And if I turn it on, it picks up the grain of the grass it stands on. And if I move the character to a brown area, you can see that now there's some brown in the shadows. This is what you get with the global illumination. And the first thing is that SDFGI um, holds its promise of being something that just works. You turn it on, these are the default settings, and it does something cool. The scene is a little blown out, so typically when you turn it on, you want to tweak the tone map settings, which you have to tailor to your game's brightness and everything. So I'm going to lower the exposure so the image is not so bright, and I'm going to change the white point um, to add uh, a bit of brightness in the brightest areas. I do that by lowering the white point. There you go. So now we have a bit more uh, balanced image. Now, this is not where it stops. Um, first, you can control the brightness of the global illumination with its energy setting. So if I turn it down, you can see that uh, we get very dark shadows. And as I increase it, we get more and more uh, bounce light. Uh, I'm going to um, set it back to one to the default. And then I can change the bounce feedback. If I lower it or increase it a lot, you can see that it brightens only certain areas. Let's look at what these are by going to the lighting display. There you can see that with SDFGI turned on, we have some green, we have some brown in our lighting information. I think that if I play with the bounce feedback uh, in this mode, we're going to lose a bit of the saturation, but you can see more clearly what it does. It tends to brighten the shadows as you increase it uh, without affecting the occluded areas as much, like the part below the trees. Okay, let's go back to the normal display and look at other effects that combine with SDFGI at the performance cost. The first one is SSAO, Screen Space Ambient Occlusion. This is going to uh, add shade to the areas of contact in your game where geometry is close to uh, other meshes. So it adds a bit of shadow at the base of the grass, for example, and it makes the geometry feel a bit more like things are touching. 
The next one is SSIL, Screen Space Indirect Lighting. This is a post-processing effect that adds to the SDFGI or to a GI probe, which is an alternative for global illumination in Godot. And when you turn it on, you're going to get a bit more shade in this case. But if I crank up the intensity, you can see if I completely blow it out, you can see that it also adds colors and saturation to your image. Um, so you can play a bit with the intensity to add a bit more occlusion as well to the scene, but also a bit more warmth in some areas where light reflects between two surfaces. Note that this comes at a, a slight performance cost, or not so slight actually, uh, but we can't talk too much about that yet because this is still a development version and uh, the lighting hasn't been fully optimized yet. The final thing I want to show that combines well uh, with uh, SDFGI is the adjustment section. So I've uh, changed the tone map to get a nicer picture, but maybe I want a bit more contrast uh, in my image. And I can get that by turning on the adjustments of my environment resource. I can tweak the brightness of the image, the overall brightness, and I can tweak the contrast and saturation. So I can get something stronger and note that all these settings, you can change them at runtime with these small adjustments. Uh, I can make my scene look a bit sunnier, like the, the sun is standing strong there. If you want more videos like this, be sure to subscribe to the channel because we're preparing some more 3D content. And I'll also let you know when we release the demo on GitHub. We want to make some more improvements, add the enemy models, etc. before doing that. But with that, I'll see you in the next one. If you want to get started making games or help a loved one get into game development, check out our free and open source app, Learn GD Script from Zero. This app allows you to learn in the browser for free. It has interactive practices that you can do without having to download anything. You'll find a link to the app in the description below.